One more time. Slick and Shiny Tongue and Cheek Productions takes us for a ride back to the days of yesteryear. And we're uh, going to take that ride back to Wilpen, Wilpen, Pennsylvania, out a bit northeast of Ligonier. And first of all, we'll try to establish context here. This is Ligonier. 7-Eleven goes up this way. And right over here, running parallel to 7-Eleven, is the road that goes to Wilpen. This is Wilpen, right in here. Google Earth gives us a uh, look from up in the sky. This is about 1017 going past Wilpen. Wilpen's Fire Company is right out here on the road. And you come up here, and the people that live in Wilpen live back here. And Mike Mance has uh, been good enough to provide some information on where the Coke ovens in the mine at Wilpen once was, right here. Angie O'Brien has also helped me with a good bit of information about the place. And we will move on here to show you Ligonier was down here. Up here is Oak Grove. And out here is where Wilpen will happen. It's not here yet. In the year 1867, this map was made. And Wilpen wasn't even thought of yet. But there was an awareness out this way of coal. You can see right down here a symbol for a coal mine. And there came a time when coal became very important. Uh, when it became important was the uh, availability of railroad shipping. You could sell the stuff and market it big time. Now, here is the guy that made Wilpen happen. William Penn Snyder. William Penn. Will Penn. Ah, we're seeing where Wilpen got its name. Wilpen. Named for the guy who started the place. William Penn Snyder. He was a big Pittsburgh wheel and, wheeler and dealer in uh, coal and iron and steel and coke. 1899, he started a company called the Shenango Furnace Company, and he did not make furnaces. What he was doing was running blast furnaces to make steel. And if you want to make steel running blast furnaces, you need coke. And he knew there was good coking coal out in Westmoreland County. So he bought some property and built himself a town and that's how Wilpen happened. Will also built himself a house. And that's what he built. Not bad digs. Now here is a picture of some of the guys who worked for Will Snyder at Wilpen. It's the big tipple that uh, dealt with the coke and coal out there. You can see a railroad train down there, part of the Ligonier Valley Railroad that was doing the hauling. And this is where the guys lived. Their dwellings weren't quite as elegant as uh, Will Snyder's. Eventually, there became a good number more houses built, so that there were like around 30 houses or more. And some of these houses are still out there. This is Boss's Row up on the hill here. And at this point, I'm going to shut this part down. And then next, you're going to see uh, some video that Angie O'Brien provided for us. And it shows the mine 
at Wilpen when it was up and running in 1940. So hang on, you'll see the mine. We're going to see this video clip that was done back in 1940 when the mine at Wilpen was still running. And Pete Picardio is the guy who narrates it and it says filmed and narrated. So that means Pete was doing the filming. Now we're going to go and start where else? At the very beginning. I think that sound you have is from the old 16 millimeter projector. Hotel. T. Barry Stavern used to look there right across the street. Uh, there's a Ligon Air Valley Supply Company store. John Smith was the manager. There's where I was born, right there, that first house on the right. That's it, George S. Tavern. Macon Coal Company on the office there. That's the Ligon Air Valley Railroad coming down with a little cook. Brick school where I went to school, fourth grade. Right on the right is Joe West, who's a superintendent. Oh, that's a motor. They're loading the ties to post the hole as a roof. That's to hold the ceiling up in the coal mine. And then those uh, trucks coming in from the uh, strip job unloading coal. They were running out of coal there, see. I think there's only about 15 coke ovens left there whenever I took that picture. They were getting ready to close her up. Toward the end, they did strip mining because the, the mine itself had, had shut there's down. The building on the left there was the powerhouse. This, they're doing some welding work there. Welding. Welding machinery. And it's being pushed into the mine, hold the roof up. That's the post they used to hold a ceiling up in the coal mine. That's Joe Evans from Ligon Air. He knew those guys. See the vintage of those cars from the 30s. See, whenever they get the coke pushed out, uh, there, then they close it up. That's what he's doing. Then they close her up with this stone. That's the oven that he's uh, bricking up because they're going to put another batch in there of coal, which they make coke out of. They have to burn the coal. It burns out the impurities. There it comes out with it now. And, after and that's after it's done. You have a good high carbon uh, product there. It makes heat high enough to make steel. Coal isn't... Um, right in the big cars. See, a lot of those guys I didn't see for years when I was out there in 1940. I lived there in 22. Getting ready to close her up. It was really labor-intensive work. It was also a project that required a lot of water, surprisingly, because when you uh, opened those ovens up again, you had to put the burn out. You had to you had to quench it. Up on top, waiting. Now these guys are doing repairs on the uh, track, putting new new ties in under the rails. These guys are replacing ties, putting spikes in there.
They used to call guys Gandhi dancers who did that work on the railroad. That's Ellen L. Bensey, bookkeeper. That's the office that she's coming out of. Joe West on the right and Bob Shari. Joe West was a superintendent and Bob Shari had charge of Coke Owens. That's Joe Payne, the Honey Dipper, and uh, Mr. Alexander on the right. And Mr. Alexander took care of the horses. That's when they used horses and mules to pull the coal. And of course... That's young Teabury, Tony Teabury, is wolfing around up there at the coke yard. And this is taking the top off to get it at the coal. What they're doing here is doing strip mining with this big uh, dirt mover. Because at one point... The mine simply shut down. It wasn't producing coal anymore, but they wanted to keep making coke. So they strip mined the coal so they could keep doing coke. Now what I'm going to do is shut this down. This will be the end of this particular uh, number one on Wilpin. So we'll see you for the next one. Bye now.